This unit follows up on the similarly named unit from AS, economic, moral, legal, ethical, and cultural issues. But at A2, this is just one objective. It's about professional behavior. It's describing the role that the codes of conduct have in promoting professional behavior. So, well, what does that even mean? Well, let's start by thinking about professional behavior. When you're a professional, when you're working in a professional industry, we need to adhere to a series of rules and regulations so that the customers using our service have confidence in the quality and professionalism of your work. Now, in the computer science industry, there are many codes of conduct that we can sign up to and some industry bodies that regulate us. But in any computer science or IT field, we often have to agree to a code of conduct just to work in an organization. And this applies to more than just working professionals. You had to sign up to a code of conduct when you joined your school. And in the same way, these codes of conduct explain how we are meant to work and what sort of standards are expected to us in the place that we work in. And if we break those standards, we can be told to leave. The code of conduct then sets out the professional standards required by that institute as a condition of membership. And many people often ask, why would I need to join that institution? This institution might be an industry recognized body, like say the British Computing Society, which gives you as a practitioner a level of professionalism and a stamp that basically says, look, I will work at this standard because you've agreed to a code of conduct. But in most cases, the institutions that we're talking about are your employers. Now, of course, it includes standards for professional competence, you know, how good you are at your job, and your integrity, your moral standing, essentially. So here are a few of them, and we'll go through them at length here. First of all, developers should not claim a level of competence that they don't possess. So what we're saying here is you shouldn't advertise that you can do something that you can't. And why might that be a problem? Well, certainly, if you say that you are an expert at security research and encryption technologies, and really you're just looking it up on Wikipedia and trying your best, well, the chances are the quality of your work is going to be extremely poor, or it's going to be riddled with security holes. So it's important that you only work on things you feel competent to do. And going hand in hand with that, then, you should keep your suite of skills up to date with regular CPD. That's continual professional development. So basically, don't just sit on your laurels because you've learned how to program in a certain language. You should constantly be improving your skill set and getting better at it in order to keep up with the needs of the market. The third one here, developers should promote equality and inclusion and not discriminate on any ground. So that involves things like just making sure that you are adding accessible features to software you're developing. There are systems to allow people with visual disabilities to access your program, people with auditory or, or motor problems to be able to use your software. You've thought about them in that respect, but also not doing things like discriminating against people because of their ethnic origin. All of these things are important because we want the industry to be as inclusive and as open as possible. Okay, so developers should ensure they have knowledge of relevant laws and legislation that impact upon the work they're undertaking and especially in computer science we are affected by a bunch of laws and not just british laws but also international laws if you are developing software for a particular country you need to know about the laws of that country especially prevalent is things like the gdpr the general data protection regulations which inform how we can and can't use personal information and not only are there legal sanctions in place for if we misuse that, there are monetary sanctions. So you can be fined for doing it wrong. This is always an interesting one, I think. Developers should seek and respect critique for their work. So we should seek out criticism and we should listen and react to this honest feedback. Why is that important? Because if we didn't, we're working in a vacuum. And not only could our code be worse as a result of not getting criticism and improving it, but also nobody else may know what our code is talking about. And when somebody else comes to look at it later on, they may not understand what's happening. This one I think is quite straightforward. Developers should work without injuring others, including property, reputation, all that sort of stuff, including yourself. You've got a moral obligation to work in a safe environment. Not hurting other people in any, any of these ways, just a basic responsibility. Developers should reject bribery or other unethical inducements to work. So you shouldn't be working on dodgy things and you shouldn't be taking money to do things in certain ways. You shouldn't be selling on people's data if you don't have to, all these sorts of things to make sure your the quality of your software products is positive. Developers should respect the confidentiality of clients, and that's particularly important if you are working for big organizations that really value secrecy. 
Finally, developers should not engage in the use of pirated or illegal software. Sort of goes without saying. But if you haven't paid for your Adobe license and you're knocking things up in Photoshop, then that does feel a bit morally bankrupt, doesn't it? Especially if you're trying to earn your living by making software of your own. What about the individual organizations though? Well, codes of conduct for specific organizations are more likely to include general advice for how to work in that environment. So the levels of privacy or disclosure you're allowed to make. For instance, you get a job working for Apple, the amount of disclosure you can make is very limited. You can't talk about the projects you're working on publicly. And that could be on social media or that could be to your friends over a couple of glasses of lemonade. They'd also probably talk about the levels of access to resources and materials, what your job level requires you to access and, and who's allowed to see what and edit what are important things to talk about. Who owns the intellectual property that you're creating is a massively important thing. Normally it would be the organization itself, but in in some cases, individual people own those sorts of things. But the idea being, if you work for us for two years on a piece of software, what rights do you have over that software you've created? And usually, absolutely none. The intellectual property is owned by the organization. Finally, your conduct on social media. It is very important that you are not making a fool of yourself online and bringing the company into disrepute. 